although the structure here does seem extremely intricate, this network was actually grown via incredibly simple deterministic rules. Rules which are so simple that a child could easily understand them. And the initial condition and the rules are all completely deterministic. There's no randomness being added into the system. All of this complexity has been grown just as a result of following simple rules. So I think there's really two very interesting questions that one can ask about systems like this. One is about the complexity. I mean, um, this is the network which we get from running our rules for 150,000 time steps. And the pattern clearly looks quite complex. But is this complexity just an illusion? If we had the right kind of analysis method, could we somehow make a little formula which told us how this system was going to run? In other words, is it possible to actually kind of crack this system and figure out what's really going on? Or will the system remain shrouded in mystery like many systems such as the prime numbers have for a long time? So that's one question. Another question is, what are the large scale kind of laws or tendencies um, behind this kind of network growth? I mean, clearly this not, is not a completely random looking network. We see these little structures, um, similar motifs appearing in different places. So do we get large scale behavior of a certain type? Does the network cluster in particular structure, into particular structures? What's going on? Okay, so the network was generated by starting with a cube and then using these four little rewrite operations shown at the top here. And so essentially what happens is that we have this, what I call the writer, which is signified by a black vertex and on any time step, the writer looks at its surroundings and then it applies one of these four different rewrite rules shown at the top, depending on its surroundings. So, for example, if there are no edges linking its neighbours, then it applies the first rule. If there's a red edge linking its neighbours, then it applies the second rule. I'll explain the details in the comments section. But... As you can see, it's a completely deterministic process. And just by starting from our little initial cube, you can see that this immensely complex structure is being spun out. Um, now, the edges are red, blue and green. And that's so that the writer can kind of orient themselves so that we can run the system deterministically in a simple way. So in other words, we kind of added the edge colors so that we could make a sort of um, a system that could grow a complex network using very simple rules. Um, but it's just remarkable how by just starting from a little cube and just by following these four little rewrite operations, we can get this massively complex network generated I mean, this movie just shows what happens over the first 300 time steps, but you just saw the result of what happens after 100,000 time steps. Well, here's the network we get after we run the system for 10,000 time steps. Okay, so you can see that it's fairly complex. I shall rotate it around a bit. You can probably see that there's several similar kinds of motifs and things occurring. But um, on the whole, it really seems difficult to, to extrapolate um, a pattern from one part of the network to another. There seem to be these large kind of cycles 
we seem to be surrounded by smaller cycles. So there does seem to be a kind of almost like fractal aspect to this. But um, on the other hand, there also does seem to be extremely densely ramified parts of the network. So it seems difficult to make any kind of general statements about what's going on. Anyway, we can do some, we can look at some statistics to try and get some more concrete idea about whether the pattern produced by this simple rule is really complicated or whether there is some hidden order. I mean, obviously, this network grows over time, so a fairly simple kind of measure would be how many vertices are there on a given time step. Well, here's a plot for the first 10,000 time steps showing the number of vertices. And at this scale, it looks like a perfectly straight line. Now, if you look closer, you'll see that it's not actually a perfectly straight line, as we shall see. So let's try and fit a curve to this, to this, um, these points here, which show the number of vertices in our growing network on different time steps. Well, this is the best fit curve, roughly. It's um, if the x-axis is denoted by t, t for time, then um, there should be about um, 13.6 plus 1.5 times t uh, vertices on time step t. That's what this this red line here, this is like a best fit curve. But it's not an exact fit with the data. And so if we actually look at the kind of error, then we see something very interesting. So this is a plot of the actual value of the number of vertices. Take away the predicted value according to that curve. And you can see that this is a remarkably complicated looking function. Is there any sort of order here? Um, I'm just looking. There, there hardly even seems to be repeating parts. Usually if you look at a curve like this, you can see places where similar kinds of patterns reoccur. But that doesn't even seem to be happening here. It looks like the um, the kind of error between our straight line fit and the reality is extremely complex. Okay then, so another way to measure the complexity of a system is to see how complex the way that the writer moves around is. And so um, generally, um, when we encode these systems running in computers, we give numbers to the vertices. And the scheme that I normally use is that when a new triangle is created, the two newly created vertices get indexes v plus 1 and v plus 2, where v is the current number of vertices. So um, since all our vertices are numbered, we can then keep track of what number the writer has over time. And that's what's shown by this plot here. And so what you can see by this is that the way the writer is moving over time is remarkably complicated. And it seems sort of unpredictable. Uh, it actually kind of seems like there's a bit of a, a kind of change that happens round about time step 9000. If you notice at this time, the writer stops visiting these vertices with very low index, these very early, early created vertices, and seems to start visiting a new range of vertices instead. So it does seem as if the kind of modal behavior, sort of the kind of mode of the behavior of the system does change. But honestly, it looks very difficult to decipher a pattern from this. But of course, the way that the um, writer is positioned over time is somewhat arbitrary uh, because it depends upon the way we index our vertices. 
So another thing we can have a look at is um, actually what kinds of surroundings or what kinds of rewrite operations actually get performed over time. So remember, the way our system works is that we start with a cube and every time step we apply one of these four rewrite operations, one, two, three, or four. And so this list here, this shows which operation gets applied on which time step. So on the first time step, this left operation number one gets applied. On the second time step, again, operation one gets applied. On the third time step, operation two gets applied, and so on. And so what's interesting here, if we have a look at this list, is it seems like on most of the time steps, operation one gets applied. But every now and again, a different operation gets applied. So what we'll do is we'll make a plot of all of the um, of at what time steps these um, operations other than one are applied. So, for example, um, when n is one, the first time that a operation other than one gets applied is three. When n is two, the um, the second time an operation other than one is applied is five, and so on. So what we're plotting here are the uh, n versus the the nth time step that rewrite operation one doesn't get applied. Okay, and so obviously this is a linear curve, but if we have a look at the differences between this curve, again we see a remarkably complex kind of behaviour, and haven't got very far of analysing this, it really seems like there's very little pattern to be seen. Um, there are statistical things which are occurring, but it really does seem as if, in some sense, this system is just highly complex. And so I think this somewhat answers our first question, at least at least um, to my satisfaction, that I think that this system really does produce some kind of proper pseudo-randomness. And I don't think it corresponds to what perhaps Stephen Wolfram would call a complex system as opposed to chaotic. I mean, he calls complex systems those systems which are kind of between chaos and order and which have persistent substructures which interact with one another. I don't think we've seen much of that kind of thing happening. What it looks like this system is doing is more like chaos. I would say this is a chaotic network rewrite system because wherever we look we just seem to see lack of pattern, lack of decipherable pattern. And obviously there are large scale behaviors which are being produced. And so that's going to be the next thing to have a look at. What can we say about the large scale structure of this network which is grown by this incredibly simple rule?